Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs and we are starting day three of farming the God Roll Skull Masher. But our tactics are evolving. If you remember the last two days, we were farming the Tink of Cunning. Now we will be farming Ista the Invincible. So let's get this side quest done. To farm Ista, first you need to unlock DLC 2. Then you have to get to the point where he gives you the quest we slash. And part one of that is to pick up some flowers. Hand over the flowers. And then he gets really mad. Now, Ista will actually ask you to fight him several times until he levels up to Ista the Invincible. That's what we're trying to go for. All right, round two, bro. This time you get Monarchs. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so upon further investigation, you actually don't get part three for his quest line until you finish the Guns, Loves, and Tentacles DLC. Okay, so we finished DLC two. We came back here. We fought Ista the Invincible the first time, and he drops his loot on the ground here. So we're going to do run counter number one. I meant to be recording the fight, but we basically one shot Iso the Invincible and he drops his load here. Now what you can do is, and this is what I was talking about, we have evolved tactics. What you can do is you can save quit this zone. Okay, before reviving Ista the final time. Because if you revive him, this strategy does not work. When you defeat Iso the Invincible, do not revive him. Then what you can do is you can save quit. And what most people will do is this right here. They will attach a snowdrift on probably and they will throw on an EMP 45 and they will snowdrift over there going for max max speed. And they will check the loot again because Ista is still down until you revive him. Don't shoot my clockwork resin accident, but you will still drop skull mashers like right here. Run number two and his loot pool will get reset every time. Let's go ahead and check out this, this Skull Masher. Okay, barrel is the wrong barrel. As soon as it has the blade, we know it's not perfect. It has to be dastardly. The scope accessory is the time six, which is super nice. I believe if I if I go out, to the, it'll be a time six zoom. Yes. Very cool. So we got the right scope. That's the scope we're looking for. We're trying to memorize the parts so we can tell just by looking. Got the right scope. The stock is actually the right stock. Beautiful. So this is the... The, it's got the groovy handle and the Jacobs looking stock. And the foregrip is the right foregrip. The only thing, this is pretty close to a god roll. Really close to a god roll. The only thing that we're missing is the right barrel. This is the third best roll you can get. The third or fourth best roll you can get. This is by far the best skull measure that we have so far. It's magazine size is six. Again, I'm not being picky with the magazine size, but this is the one to beat. I can get more damage than this and more crit damage than this with a different barrel, but everything from the back half of this weapon is 100% perfect. So, if we do not revive Ista, we can save quit the game and come back. However, we're going to take this one step further, and I want to thank the Reddit user that I saw put this out. If we do not run over there, we can use a little bit of a different strategy. What you do is... Don't run over there. Instead, save, quit the game again. You're like, what? I'm going to count that as a run, by the way. Save, quit the game again. And you're going to say, this is completely, this is ridiculous, utter ridiculousness. Don't, this isn't how this is supposed to be done. Trust me. Okay? Do you trust me? When you get to this screen, save and quit. And I'm sorry you guys didn't see the Ista takedown. Just, when you, just, when you kill Ista, be careful. Do not revive Ista. If you have got clockwork res, don't just whip that bad boy out and shoot at him. Don't do it. But if you do not go check the loot that drops and instead just sit here safe quitting, all that loot will go to your lost loot machine aboard Sanctuary. And we're going to fill up that lost loot machine with as many items as possible. Let's go ahead and fast travel over to Sanctuary 3. So run over to your lost loot machine. And it will be partially full until all these, all these items get spat out. It's got a lot of them saved up for my last runs. Hopefully we get a skull masher. There's a there's a couple cocky bastards I see. I see a skull masher in there. It's iron willed, which means it's not gonna be the number one weapon. It's gonna be lower damage than my current. The dastardly is the prefix we're looking for. So it looks like we didn't get the skull masher, and if we look at this, it says empty. Head back to Ista. You're only going to get a total of 15 weapons in your lost loot machine. It would take a hundred runs exactly to give you an average of 15 skull mashers. The problem is that half of them won't be skull mashers because there's two weapons in the dedicated drop pool so if we do 50 runs instead 
So honestly, going up by in, in increments of 50 might honestly be the way because then on average, I will get more. Like my lost loot machine will be completely full. Uh, I wonder if you can do the same thing with Mayhem. I doubt it. Um, Mayhem might be a little bit faster. What we can do to test to see if it is faster is let's go check the loot. We have our snowdrift. We have our EMP 45. Let's get over there as fast as we can. Check the loot real quick. Not gonna pick up anything. Let's let it go to the lost loot machine. Unless we, of course, we get the God of Roll Skull Masher. So check the loot. Nothing too great, right? So it's greens and whites. Let's go ahead and change our mayhem. Mayhem 11 to 10. Let's go check the loot and see if the, if the loot changes. That might be an even faster way to reset. Then save quitting back to the main menu. Okay, so, so the loot is completely different. So if I instead just swap Mayhems back and forth. So there's there's 16, and this one right here will be 17. So let's just swap to Mayhem 10. Apply. Yep. 17. Is this, tell me, is this bit faster or slower than farming the Tink of Cunning? <laughs> I, I gotta believe that this is faster than farming the Tink of Cunning, personally. All right, so hit tab. Swap Mayhems. We're back. 18 runs. Let's do it, baby. This may or may not be the absolute cheesiest run or cheesiest way to get the Skull Masher 19 runs. But I am down. If, if this is how the game wants to allow me to farm, like this is the most efficient farm, I don't mind doing the most efficient farm. Like I really don't mind it at all. Just keep swapping between Mayhems until we get to, oh, we'll say 40. There's 20. 21. 22. So yeah, that's how fast it could really go, honestly. Like, you know, if I was just doing videos where I where I don't sit here and just play the game and just talk into the mic, then I could I could just cut each one up like that. But I, I like the idea of having you guys be here for literally every single run. That that to me is like kind of like what I wanted to. Because I'm sitting here anyway playing the game and I don't want that time to go completely misused. You know what I'm saying? Could make shorter videos, but there's already so many people that make, you know, um, edited farming runs. And I get that those edited farming runs will get more views because they're more consumable. That completely makes sense to me. But not everybody wants a shorter version if a longer version exists. You know? Or maybe if somebody likes the short version, they might also like the long version. You know what I'm saying? Some people want to be there for the, for the immediate, like, oh, did he get it today? And other people don't want to be there for that. Some people just want someone to farm next to on a side monitor or, you know, while you're doing your... Yeah, exactly. Like, while you're doing your farming, I'm just sitting here swapping my mayhems. The best part is, once we find the God Roll Skull Masher, we can go farm something else that doesn't look like this. This 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 isn't the way the farm goes. By the way, the reason I reset the odds in the runs in general is because this is a much different method with much different odds. The Tink of Cunning had a 50% drop chance. Ista has a 15. So. It's much lower. And in fact, it might even be lower than 15. Because if they share drop odds, then it's 7.5% for each of them, which is rough. But I'm pretty sure it's 15, because for a total of 30, so. Yeah. Let's go. So 30% of the time, he will... 30% of the time, he will drop a... one of his dedicated drops so 15 it's actually 45 runs 45 runs is the amount to get the average amount is the amount of runs we need to do to get a full loot machine if you want to get a full loot machine on average it'll take 45 runs and of the lost loot machine of the 15 items in there seven or eight of them is on average to be a skull masher which is which is fine with me i might call it at 15 runs and go check the thing is, when you every time you go check, if you're inefficient with your checks, then you lose runs. You know what I'm saying? So it's a much different strategy. Our run counter is going up faster, but the overall odds are much, much lower. At the, at the end of the day, it is a trade-off. Make sure you're only using 10 and 11, though. I think that that impacts, yeah, because you don't want to have drop a Mayhem 9 Skull Masher. So... And the other one, the 
the cocky bastard is actually a really cool sniper as well it does 150 percent bonus shock damage when you land a crit sounds pretty good to me i might end up using that it's like a way to have revolter without revolter anyways it's just a much different it's a much different farm now and honestly it's like the odds are way worse than the Tink of Cunning to get the God Row one, which is like 1 257. But it's a, it's a much different experience. And this is this is a this is a pretty unique farm. Like you, we'll have plenty of bosses to farm that are trial of cunning, trial of, of fervor, like all that stuff, right? But you're never really gonna have a farm like this. Like this is like this is unique. This is a unique farm where you use the lost loot machine and spam reset the zone. Like if you want to talk about being a Borderlands player, this is like, this, this is incredible. And Ice does such a strange fight that when you drop him, when you drop him, you get the loot reset every single time. Like it's just a really, really strange interaction that we're going to make use of. You know what I'm saying? So let's get ourselves to a nice round number here. I'm going to say... I'm going to say we start at 50. Or we should go 45. Because 45 is the number, right? We can do... We can do multiples of 45. I think that would be... That'd be adequate. So 45, 90, 135, 1... I can do this. 180, 225... 273 when i get there i'll do it okay sorry about that arithmetic we'll do 45 runs and that should be that that should be enough to get ourselves a a full lost loot machine of skull masters and cocky bastards <laughs> i accidentally did two right there let's go to 41 we're looking for a very, very specific skull masher. Now, we, we could do this. I don't think this honestly made the run like that much quicker. It just made it a heck of a whole lot easier. Like this is this is an easy farm now. We do not have to kill the Tink of Cunning at all. At all. And that was a tough farm. I can just sit here and do a swappity swoop. And the thing is, I don't want any other legendaries in the pool so schluter not good to use i don't want any other legend legendaries in the pool because those will go into my lost loot machine and i'm assuming that they will take precedent i'm not sure how the lost loot machine does its math it might it might do its math by taking the highest score item that i'm not entirely sure of we can check that by checking the items that aren't skull masters or cocky bastards and seeing if any of them have higher item scores than those snipers. So there's 45 runs. Let's stop it there and head back to Sanctuary. Come on, this is this is gonna be the run right here. Map me, sanctuary me, sanctuary me. I believe. You guys believe? I believe. All right, lost loot machine. Let's count how many items come out of it to, to confirm. So it's full. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen items. Looks like we got some some decent class mods. Do the class mods have a higher overall item score than the snipers? No, it is lower. So um, it might go by recency, which is not what I want. Okay, so looking for dastardly skull mashers. There's one, six round magazine. I can't really tell. We're only taking dastardlies though. We already have the best roll non-dastardly. Dueling. No, thank you. Okay, so it looks like we only got one dastardly skull masher out of that whole drop pile. Which is okay. I mean, it's not the it's not the worst deal in the world. Let's go check it out. Where are you? There you are, dastardly skull masher. 
So right away, I can tell you this, this the stock isn't right. It's not curvy. The barrel might be correct, but I think it is not. Let's check it out. Oh, the barrel is correct. Very cool. So if it has that muzzle, that is a good one. The scope, it doesn't have the six times. The stock isn't the right stock. Yep. And the foregrip is not the right foregrip either. That's going to be a tough one for me to mem memorize, but... The foregrip we're looking for looks like this. It's like a little bit... It's a little bit bulkier. The scope... It's going to be hard to tell the scopes too, but that's the scope accessory we're looking for. That little wire attached. The stock, we pretty much have the stock memorized, I think, at this point. But the foregrip is a little bit bulkier. It has that nice padding, the same one that's on the stock, I think. So, yep. So, no skull master on this run. Let's head back to Aista. So, now we're 45, 45 runs into a 899 farm. Because of the way I had to edit this video, because I had to go over and finish the DLC, and then I came back, and then I f didn't record the actual ice to fight, which is really, really rough overall from the content on the channel. <laughs> um, because I had to reset all of it, and by the way, if I go into a different zone with a loot spawn, I'm not sure. Like if I go to like any, any one of the fast travel stations on this map with a loot spawn, not entirely sure. But we were going to be doing 45 rounds and then 45 rounds. I think that is going to be the mathematically most efficient way to do it. I might drop it to 40 to see if like, oh, maybe I got a little bit lucky. But every time we go back, if we only get one dastardly skull masher. It's going to be a little bit disheartening. But listen, we are we are veterans of the disheartening. OK. I. I farmed several days in a row back in the day for a Rocketeer class mod on Moe's. One that had five points in Fire in the Skag's Den. But I would have accepted anyone that didn't have any points in Tor Cross promotion. And I wanted God tier bottom rolls. Action skill damage, action skill cooldown rate maybe was in there, but weapon damage, fire rate, all that kind of stuff, right? So I was going for just an absolute perfect roll Rocketeer, and I got one. And I got one. But it took forever. It took forever. I think I was actually farming for weeks. Like weeks. Like uh, IRL time. Because like every time I'd play, I would just hop on. My buddies would be like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm farming. Borderlands. They're like, oh, okay. So like me just sliding to the same small enemy. And it was like one of those farms that you had to snow drift through the streets of Lectra City. And enter the subway city system down there. And go fight one of them, the side quest mini bosses. I could, I could one shot the mini boss, no problem with a very, all kinds of different builds. But if there was like a cryo enemy that spawned out, slow you down, and you could get tagged by cryo anytime, so you're just trying to snow drift by as quickly as possible. And I, I mean, I got pretty good at the farm. But I farmed the Rocketeer forever. And, well, I don't know what happened, but I lost it. I don't know if I sold it. Like, imagine, imagine losing your. Your, like the Rocketeer was the class mod that I wanted the most. It's like that was like gonna be my signature class mod. Have Moe's and Iron Bear out there at the same time. And if you combine that with the big surplus from the purple tree, which is an crazy crazy powerful skill, you get so much bonus damage while your action skill is on cooldown. And the Rocketeer is the absolute best way to keep it on cooldown. Because Iron Bear just stays out with you. Just stays out, doesn't care. It's pretty ridiculous. It's one of Moses' best boots on the ground class mods, and it, it lets Iron Bear stay out there the entire time while you fight. It's just a ridiculous combo. Sorry, we're going for 45. We're going to go all the way to 90 here. So I, I'm used to the disheartening. I'm, I'm used to having stuff go away. I've, I farmed a times three cryo sword explosion on my Berserker the one week where the boss that dropped it was the Chaos Chamber final boss it's like bones it was um oh man he's one of the main characters it's like something bones or it was the it was the pirate captain boss and my berserker is all ice damage right and skeletons take bonus cryo damage so this this boss was so easy to wipe out and it was also the best time for chaos chambers because that's a really fast chaos chamber boss too so like it was god tier farming that week so I got my times three cryo sword explosion, which at the time was the highest 
like the biggest damage weapon in the game especially for berserker and if you feel a stabomancer mixture oh my gosh anyways i went to go show my brother and it fell through the chaos chamber floor like it actually fell through the chaos chamber floor gone forever no lost loot machine to save it so like i'm used to losing stuff I'm used to seeing the run counter go up and having nothing to show for it. That being said, ever since I have been recording, every time I've gone for a piece of gear, it's never taken me the total amount of runs that I've assumed it would have. I've been getting really, really lucky. I'm hoping that this farm can be um, even faster. Now you're saying, like, why would anyone ever watch this? <sighs> You know, it, it is, it's a cruel, it's a cruel thing to do to yourself to sit here <laughs> um, and do this. But the thing is, if I revive Ista, every time I want to run this, every time I want to put that farm counter up one, I have to go kill, I have to run over there and take him down. So it's this or Tink of Cunning. Make your choice. Sometimes I might do Tink of Cunning. Sometimes I might come back here and do this. I have, I know how many Tink of Cunning runs I've done. 11. I could continue going with that or I could do this grind and this grind is a little bit heinous <laughs> but at the same time I mean it is max efficiency it's just that I might go a little bit crazy doing it 63 runs in we're trying to get to 90 and then we're gonna go check the lost loot machine imagine that the lost loot machine was like way way bigger and you could set it to only give you sniper rifles or something like that oh my gosh Imagine a lost loot machine with filter options. Like, I only want you to get me this type of item. That would actually make Red Rain farmable in Borderlands 3. A big reason why I can't get the cut purse launch pad right now for ammo regeneration is because its its farm source is Red Rain. If you don't know who Red Rain is, it is, is the final boss of the Slaughter Star 3000 Circle of Slaughter. And I was like, oh, that's fine. Like, I can just reset the boss, just like Titan in the slaughter shaft and it worked once where where i got the boss to respawn i didn't work again and the second time it dropped its, its loot off the cliff i probably should have checked the lost loot machine and i believe i did and i didn't see it but I, again i could be wrong but every time i want to go back and check the lost loot machine for that farm I would not be able to reset the boss. I have to. I would have to go through the entire Slaughter Star 3000 waves zero through five every single time I wanted to farm one chance at a launch pad. One chance. Oh my gosh! I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could take that, especially if it's falling off the cliff. Like, and there's a chance it just doesn't show up in the lost loot machine because there's just so much loot falling. But again, if it if it's recency instead of item score and you guys let me know the comments have been goaded when it comes to information um let me know how does lost loot machine work do we know if it's recency or it's item score how does it filter how does it know what to give you this lost, lost loot machine strat is is i mean it's a little bit insane when it comes to efficiency i think especially if you're just swapping mayhems we might get one this episode and if we get one this episode then i'll be using it against a whole bunch of bosses but the problem is i need to re-roll the anointment and i don't have a iridium which is sad but i would i would totally do a, a quest to 1 million iridium video where we use different methods not just voracious canopy to farm to get to a million iridium or something like that that would be a kind of a cool series now, would I yap the whole time? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> and that's just how it would be. That's just how it would go. All right, keep it going. Would it be even faster to do this on controller? Can we can we evolve our efficiency even more? Let's try it. Let's turn on our controller. Okay, I think it's connected. So we hit the back button. Oh my gosh, it is so much faster. Let's go, baby. Our efficiency is going absolutely through the roof. Which is awesome, by the way. The only thing we're waiting for is these load times. 
Like, how, why would anyone ever watch? It's like, it's not, it's not about, it's about the grind. Like, you want to get it, bro. Like, so it's, <laughs> you want to get it. Every time I go on Reddit and I see someone in like the Borderlands, hey, I'm, this is what I'm looking for. I just think to myself, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't you, it's like looking for God roll Sandhawks. Like, bro, what are you doing? Don't you know that like the game is to, I mean, I get you can play, you can play however you want with your toys and I can play however I want with my toys. Completely get that. And, but in my opinion, you are missing out if you're asking other people to drop your gear. You know what I'm saying? Like you're missing out. It's like, what am I missing out on? <laughs> what am I missing out on? Save quitting the menu a million times? Yeah. But save quitting the menu a million times gives you that, that respect for that weapon. You know what I'm saying? Like you grinded it. You farmed it. And the harder the grind... The more tedious the grind, the more monotonous the grind. However, the grind is difficult mentally, physically, whatever. The more you come to treasure the item when it drops. You know what I'm saying? The more you grow to want to use that gun. Every time, every time after the farm you grab that gun, you're going to remember how you farmed it. You're going to remember going and killing Tyreen all those times to get the God Roll Kings and Queens calls. You know? You're going you're gonna to remember killing Killavolt to get those Monarchs. You're going to remember you're going to remember farming Dinklebots to get the Butcher. But when you think about it, what is a more what's a more valuable item to you? Is it is it the King's Calls or is it a Butcher? Is it the Monarch or is it a Butcher? So the butcher is really easy to farm. It's very powerful. It's really easy to farm. It doesn't have that much value compared to some of these other items because of the labor that it, that it takes to get them. So let's get ourselves to 90 here and go check. Now that I've added the controller to this, oh man, it's like, it's revolutionized how this farm is going to go for me. Which is awesome. Awesome. Okay, apply. And I don't want butt stallion milk for anything. I don't want to increase my loot chances at all. Um, dedicated drops only. Please, I'm begging you. I don't think there's this, I don't think there's another way to make this go any faster. It's always going to load in the same zone, correct? Okay, apply. 188 if you guys didn't watch my last video it's where i break down my opinions of bl2 versus bl3 uh, it's it's pretty it's unscripted it's a, not exactly i wouldn't say it's super structured but i do i do knock home and i hammer in some of the points that i thought bl when it comes to the entire arguments around bl2 and bl3 and what people think about it because especially with bl4 coming out soon ish 90 runs by the way let's head to sanctuary now honestly with the amount of dedicated farms or um with the amount of world drops we're gonna get from iced up 45 might not be the actual number it might be less than that it might be 40 or something like that all right let's see what we get Looking for a dastardly skull masher. We already this one right here is this this iron willed is the strongest non dastardly skull masher we can find. It's a very strong skull masher. It's, again, when it could be a little bit better with a different max size, but I think or more damage with different max size. I think six is right where I want it to be. Six or I honestly would take an eight as well. Okay, start showing me snipers, please. Thank you. Still getting class mods. But a lot of snipers. Okay. Iron Will Skull Masher. Oh, this is... Okay, so we are going to check this one out. Okay, we will check that one out. Iron Will. Nope. 
Dastardly. I saw a Dastardly in there. Oh, there's Dastardly Cocky Bastards too. Where are you? Sure. I kind of want to start picking up a lot more of them. But my, my inventory is already full. Dastardly Skull Masher right there. Magazine size 8. Its damage is a little bit lower than the rest. Let's go ahead and drop some other Skull Mashers we're never going to use. Petunia. Trick. Breakneck. Dueling. So it's all Dastardlies now. All right, let's grab this one and see how it fares parts wise uh the scope uh, looks like it's wrong the stock is definitely wrong the barrel looks good and the foregrip looks good so let's check it out i think that barrel is what gives us its name yep so dastardly means the barrel is correct i believe that's how that works the scope is wrong there's no times si oh there is yeah it has a little wire very cool the stock is incorrect weapon sway um Weapon sway recoil height and fire rate is incorrect, but the foregrip is correct. So this is a really, really nice skull masher. Its fire rate is up there. Its weapons, the only part it's missing is the stock. You could say, okay, well, the magazine isn't great either, but I wouldn't mind. I would not mind in an eight magazine size. And the, ma the damage is lower, but the magazine size, man, it's a pretty big drop off. This one also has the advantage of getting better rolls. This one, it has the right barrel. But this barrel gives you damage and crit damage, whereas this this barrel, the one with the this iron weld, this barrel gives you the same amount of damage, but it doesn't give you crit damage. It gives you accuracy on the other part. All right, so you don't get the overall total damage, but this one will give me more crit damage. This... This dastardly one. Where is it? I think it's this one right here. Yeah. So this one is going to have a higher crit damage bonus. Or it should. I was the one on the left getting... How is, the... How is this one getting a higher crit damage? Oh, no, okay. 10% versus 21%. 10% versus 21%. So overall, I think that this one is better. I do. It's magazine size. Let's go ahead and do the compare feature to the iron. It's going to be better than all these. Then probably it won't be higher damage than some of these other magazine times six ones. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. This iron wield, you could probably say, where is it? That's not it. It's going to have the little loop-de-loop -loop on the... Maybe down here? Where did the Iron Will one go? This one. This this Iron Will Skull Masher. Time 6. It's really high damage. The only thing it's missing is the proper barrel, which gives it more crit damage. You could probably take your pick with a choice of these two for, like, you know, next best. Next in line. But neither one of them is absolutely perfect. Neither one of them is absolutely perfect. All right, all these duel links. And it's not really about the total amount of damage. It's about... Because it if it has a bigger magazine, I can shoot it more. You get what I'm saying? Like, and if it has a bigger magazine, the more my Jacob's Company man will impact it. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it has a 17. 17 shots versus... Let's go to the one that has a six so 17 shots versus 12 that's a five shot difference and the recoil actually the recoil is kind of insane very cool so it's, it's 17 shots versus 12 i believe so you're really gonna have to make up your mind about whether or not you want one with max damage or you want one with a max mag size i really don't know which is the absolute best but i at least want one that has perfect parts and this one is still missing one part it is missing the at the barrel 
It's got the scope. It doesn't have the... It doesn't have the stock. So we're missing that stock accessory. Or it's, it doesn't have the right stock. So it is what it is. We keep farming. But I think now what we can do is take all the skull masters that aren't this one and drop them. So again, we're not really farming for a dastardly cocky bastard right now, but let's try to see these parts. The parts on this one are a lot more difficult. I'm probably going to come back for it. But all these other dastardlies, they can go. Does this one have the right stock? I don't think this is the right stock. This is too, too fat. But just for my own, I think it's not. Okay, it is. Okay. The one, the part that this one is missing, this one is missing the barrel because it has a blade. The foregrip looks correct and the scope is wrong. So let's check that out. Foregrip, correct. Stock, correct. Scope, incorrect. And barrel, correct. So, yep. I think we have the parts down pretty well. Let's go ahead and do 10 more runs, get to 100, and then we will call the video. Let's do it. I think stopping at 100 is going to be a nice round number. So that way when we come back, it's like, yep, we got 100 runs done. And that way the next video, maybe we get to 200 and then we go to 300. And then by the time we get to 900, we're like, hey, like, where's my drop, bro? You going to give me my drop? Let's grab 10 again. This, this is the one to beat. The only part that this... Dastardly Skull Masher is missing is the stock. We're looking for that nice rounded out stock. Everything else, this even the, the big old magazine, I don't I do not mind. Not mind at all. I'm not one of those guys that needs to have top deeps. If the magazine size is good, that is good enough for me. In fact, if I got a times if I got an only four round magazine one. I would be a little bit sad. I'd be a little bit sad. Not saying I wouldn't take it, and I would probably call it there because I'm like that. This is the most damage that it can do. But I kind of want either a six or an eight. I think it makes just the weapon a little bit more usable, a little bit more functional. All right, change mayhem's, and we go up by one. It's really quick, really quick. We're getting some decent skull mashers pretty quickly now. Is it, if I had to guess if this was faster than Tink of Cunning, I would say it probably is. Because what I got, I think I, I can get probably, if I'm, if I'm hustling my bustle, 10 Tink of Cunning farms done. Um, in an hour. And so at 257, that would take me 25 and some change hours. I, I can either test how fast I can get 100 runs done of this of this weapon i think it's over 100 an hour i'm not sure again because i'm doing some editing post post process editing for this video i'm not sure exactly what the numbers are going to be but for the next one i might just yap the whole time and we'll see exactly but i might cut it down from 25 episodes to like nine episodes you know what i'm saying like why wouldn't i do that it's just less it's just less total time that being said i was I was finding ways to make my tank of cunning far more efficient. A big reason, a big way, is the Vladoff Company man. So I was going to use the light show. Or the Monarch. I was going to try them both out. But I think the, the tank of cunning is too small for the Monarch. It just feels like it doesn't do it. But a, a, with a stack bot, maybe. Maybe. And a big reason why you kind of want a bigger magazine on Flak is because of the stack bot class mod. The stack bot class mod... The more you crit in a row, the higher damage you do. Weapon damage. But, okay, here comes run number 100. Boom. Let's go back to Sanctuary and call it. The more, the more crits you do, the higher damage. But if you don't crit, then you lose your damage. So you want to be in fade away, obviously, so that you always crit. But if you're reloading, then you lose a lot of potential overall damage. So if you can get a bigger magazine weapon, you actually can stack your damage faster and faster up with a stack bot class mod. Bigger magazine, lower damage, turns into more damage and a bigger magazine with a stack bot class mod. All right, lost loot is full. In 10 runs, I got full. 
might start doing 10 runners. Okay, we're looking for a dastardly. Dastardly, dastardly, dastardly. That's a dastardly cocky bastard, but it's not a skull masher. Breakneck skull masher. Okay, I feel good that I've collected every one of these. Let's try... I'm also gonna, kind of on the lookout for good sappers. And pet trainers, like with an action skill damage or something like that. Alright, so let's check these out real quick. I'm probably gonna end up dropping all of them. Drop, drop. So this skull masher is breakneck, which means it has the worst barrel. Dueling and iron willed. This iron... Wait, iron willed is what barrel? Dueling and breakneck is what barrel? So... So I'm assuming it's only the... It's only the Dastly that has the correct barrel. So far, yeah, that's that's been true. Iron Will, this has a blade. Very cool. So let's see if I can get this correct. Okay, let's test, test this out. On this Breakneck Skull Masher, we have the wrong barrel, the wrong grip, an eight-round magazine, incorrect stock, but the right scope. Let's see. Body accessories are always the same. The wrong barrel. No damage on this barrel at all. Okay. Magazine, 8 round mag. You can tell it's because of the minus 10 damage, not because it says 8 round mag. Scope accessory is the right scope. We got our time 6. The stock is the wrong stock. It doesn't have that little loopy. And the foregrip is also wrong. Reload time and fire rate. So, not the best option for us. And none of them have the correct barrel. However, if there were to be a backup barrel, it would be the... It would be this either iron willed or dueling, which I'm, I'm not too sure what makes the difference. Is it secondary stats, weapon sway, and accuracy? Let's see. Damage and accuracy. Damage and weapon sway and accuracy. So it might be the secondary part. But either way. Those go, and we still have this one as a number one. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos like this one. This is going to be the new strat for now. We're going to be farming this out, grinding it out 100 runs at a time, and trying to get ourselves a perfect parts dastardly Maggie that can compete with this one right here. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye.